ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من بين خلقه وخليله ارسله الله بالهدى والدين الحق فادى الامانه ونصح الامه وتركنا على المهجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يضل ولا يزيغ عنها الا هالك اما بعد معاشر المؤمنين اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ثم اعلموا رحمكم الله لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا ولا تنهزموا ولا يفوت في عبودكم ما تجري في ايامنا من زلازل وفتن وبلايات ومنكرات يا اخي المسلم ويا اخت المسلمه كونوا معززين مكرمين بدينكم الذي اصطفاه الله سبحانه وتعالى لكم ومن احسن قولا ممن دعا الى الله وعمل صالحا وقال انني من المسلمين فهذا الذي ينبغي لنا وهكذا ينبغي للمسلم ان يكون معتزا بدينه رغم ما يجري في الايام من الفتن والامور التي تقشعر منه الجلود والقلوب رسالتي في هذه الخطبه نفعني الله واياكم بها ثلاث الرساله الاولى لا ننهزم ابدا لماذا لان هذا الدين الدين الحنيف الذي شرعه له لنا ربنا جل في علا لا عيب فيه ولا نقص فيه بوجه من الوجوه هو الدين القيم الذي رضيه الله لنا حيث قال اليوم اكملت لكم دينكم واتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الاسلام دينا فنرضى بالاسلام دينا وثانيا ولا بد يا معاشر المؤمنين من تغيير بعض الامور ولا بد من تصحيح وتعديل المناهج التي قد انحرفت عن الجاده وعن المنهج النبوي القويم والرساله الثالثه لا بد من الاخذ بالاسباب ولا بد من العمل الصالح النافع البناء الذي به نعيش مكرمين في مجتمعاتنا dear brothers and sisters in islam i could stand here and say i condemn such and such but when i thought about it i said maybe that's not what is most befitting at this moment because of course every individual of common sense will condemn what is happening by default and i do not agree with the way that every time that such atrocities when such extremists do what they do that the default position is that we are expected to condemn of course it's common sense we condemn this but what is the way forward every time something happens we come we condemn then they forget then it happens again we come we condemn but is this is what islam taught us 
So my message for you, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is I am challenging that situation and that status quo. I say, how can we, as a Muslim community in this city, how can we change that around? So that the city comes to recognize us and our religion as a religion of peace, a religion of constructiveness, a religion of nothing but benefit and goodness for mankind. Because why? It came from none other than the creator who created mankind and therefore had the most mercy for them. How do we get the city to recognize that from us? So that when some crazy person or individual or group goes and does whatever they do with their own agenda and their own interests, that we do not have to come here and just pay lip service and say we condemn this and that. But no, the city condemns it for us and leaves us with the energy to go forward and say how do we, with our religion and our beliefs, how do we serve the city? And how do we serve humanity? And how do we uproot such evils and such deviant ideologies? This is what's befitting. So therefore my message to you, dear brother and sister in Islam, what do you have to play in this? What is your role to play in this? For indeed, do not be afraid. Do not be let down. Do not stay down. And do not allow yourself to be boxed in and to lose the initiative. No, you have been blessed with a mighty religion. Do you know what being a Muslim is? This is the religion of the heavens and the earth and the universe before you were born into it. When Allah said to the heavens and the earth, When Allah was creating the heavens and the earth and commanded them, are you going to come in submission to me as Muslims or am I going to force you? They said we have submitted and surrendered ourselves as Muslims. So therefore being a Muslim, their brother and sister in Islam, is you joining forces with this huge and this immense and this great universe. So therefore it is not befitting for a Muslim to be other than to be constructive and to be beneficial. But of course, you know that Allah tries us. Upon the tongue of his own prophet Musa alayhi salam, Kalimullah, the one who Allah spoke to directly. Musa said, In hiya fitnatuka, tudillu biha man tasha'u wa tahdi man tasha'u, anta waliyuna faghfir lana warhamna, wa anta khayrul ghafirin. Musa said, this is your fitna. When members of his own tribe went astray, and started to commit other acts of polytheism, and they took the calf as a god besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite the signs they had seen, clearly. But Musa says, Allah, this is your fitna. This is how you've chosen to try, to try your creation. And indeed, you guide by this fitna whom you will, and you lead astray whom you will. And that indeed you are our protector. And indeed forgive us. So this is it, brothers. So we have in our ranks, People who are destroying our religion in our own, for their own purposes, for whatever agenda they may have. They are as the ulama has likened them. They are the people who, when the people seek refuge in a fortress, there are people who go behind their backs and they open the doors of this fortress and allow the enemies to enter and to invade the fortress. This is the reality. But what do we do? It's a fitna. Of course. Allah says, He has made each of us a test and a trial to see and to choose from, from us who it is who truly believes in His message and who truly believes in the day of resurrection. It is not new, brothers and sisters in Islam. And my message for you in this khutbah is three. And I've sought inspiration from a moment in the Islamic history where I have seen such great parallels between today and between that event. When the Muslims sought refuge in their own fortress, when it seemed to them that they were besieged by the whole of this world against them, when all the tribes, the Arabs or the non-Arabs in the Arabian Peninsula gathered upon them, polytheists, non-Muslims, whatever tribe or whatever religious denomination that they had followed, they came upon the, the gates of Medina and they surrounded it. Called the Confederates, the Ahzab. 
And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the dire moment was in the most need of aid and assistance and support from the people of his city, some people went behind his back and started to form allegiances and started to open the doors of the fortress behind the Muslims' back, leaving Medina exposed to these confederates. But what was the response of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this? Did he live in a besieged mentality and crawl into his shell? Did he follow one extreme or one pole? Did he give up? No, Allah, because this is not the spirit of Islam. The religion that's the religion of the heavens and the earth. It is not a religion that will give up and that will lose hope. Never. Even in the most severe and dire of circumstances. Subhanallah. Look at this prophet. When the tribes, the Qurayshites, and other than them, gathered upon them, and you would expect him to have that sense of defeat. But no, Allah. He showed this ummah that no matter what happened, if the whole of humanity were to gather upon us, our spirits will never ever dampen. And that rather we are in our most positive and creative and constructive in those circumstances. What did he say to his Sahaba? He said, Allahu Akbar, Abshiru ma'ashara muslimin, bifathillahi wa nasrihi, qad futiha li abwaab al-sham, wa qusuru madayin, wa abwaab al-yaman, wa kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi al-ahadith al-sahiha, marwiya fi al-bukhari wa ghayrih. In those dry circumstances, he did not give up. He was in his most positive. And he gave the message of positivity to his sahaba. And he said to them, O oh, company of Muslims, take glad tidings from me. For indeed Allah will aid us and will grant us victory. For indeed in this day, for indeed in this moment, I can see the gates of Yemen and the palaces of Madain in the Persian Empire and of Syria and other than them in the, the empires that were around this Arabian Peninsula in that day. So obviously, the hypocrites say, مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا They say, look at what this prophet is, is, is. Here we are, as some of them said, we can't even go to the toilet because we are being besieged. And yet this prophet is giving us glad tidings of Yemen and Syria and Persia. But no, because he was teaching them a lesson. That in the most dire of circumstances, that when the Muslims feel as though they were under siege, that's when the, the victory of Allah, and that's when the opening is nearest. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا النَّصْرِ oh, إِنَّمَا النَّصْرِ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ وَإِنَّمَا الْفَرَجْ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ That whenever the, the musibah and the hardship and the distress at its bitterest and its hardest, that's when the opening and the glory and the victory of Allah is at its closest. As Allah said, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ That indeed, the example that Allah gave to the Prophet, the example of those nations who were before the Muslims, that when they, as the Allah said, وَزُلْزِلُوا that it was almost as though the grounds were shaking beneath their feet from the severity and the hardship of the trials and the tribulation that they were going through, that they asked their Prophet, when will Allah help us? And the answer, of course, that Allah's aid is, is close. It depends on you. So that's the, that's the lesson that the Prophet gave to the Sahaba. Do not give up. You are upon the truth. This religion is nothing but the truth, brothers and sisters in Islam. But what do you do with it? What is the next step? beyond just pure condemnation and beyond just negativity and pessimism what is the next step forward? it is not befitting for a Muslim to stay down negative and giving up for that, for that reason the second message I have to give to us is that we have to change our mindset for indeed as somebody said 
and the hikmah is taken from whoever it comes from as long as it does not go against the truth that we have with us. The problems that we are facing now as a humanity cannot be solved at the same level of thinking which created them. So what we're seeing, the crisis, the extremism, the violence, the broken homes, the calamities, these problems have been, sol have been created by numerous factors. And by a certain way of thinking, that if we were ever to hope to solve them, we have to go beyond that level of thinking. And thirdly, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that we have to make do with the resources that we have. And we have to work hard and constructively and creatively. This is how the Prophet ﷺ was able to go beyond the confines of the confederates and was able to deal a blow to them. It was not a direct military affair. No, because even the historian said the direct military clashes in that particular expedition were very few and limited. But rather it was psychological. It was a psychological victory for the Muslims. Why? Because of the whole way in which the Muslims, they reconfigured themselves. Look at the resource that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put to himself and to his men. A few thousand men and women and children besieged in a city with few resources. And here they were surrounded by enemies. But yet that changed in the way that they were thinking. And using the resource that they had available to them, they were able to, to, to secure a victory. Beginning from the very first, when he came and he consulted his companions, what were they to do? And he took their opinions, amongst which was the opinion to create a khandaq, a trench. It was something that the Arabs had never known before. But it came from a non-Arab, Salman al-Farisi radiallahu an. So the Prophet ﷺ took this and he implemented it. And it was a collective effort. And in that collective effort there was immense positivity and constructiveness. Rasa Bukhari mentioned in the Sahih that the Prophet ﷺ was he himself part of it. That his stomach would be covered in dust and he would be reciting certain lines of semi-poetry called Rajas. Him and his men will be reciting this to spur themselves along, saying, Oh Allah, without Allah we would not have been guided, neither would we have prayed, neither would we have given charity. So therefore, oh Allah, establish ourselves and give us sakina, tranquility in this time of distress and in this time of stress and hardship and establish our feet firmly on the ground when we were to engage our enemies and indeed these are enemies they want to give us fitna but however we refuse that fitna and we refuse their narrative look at this this psychological edge this refusal to go down and this collectiveness of bringing the resource of the community together that every single part of the community were a part including the women, including the Prophet's own aunt, Safiya bin Abdul Muttalib, playing a huge role, not only in terms of her role as a, what, what the West would perhaps stereotype us as depicting women in, but even in terms of military activity on her part, showing that we as a Muslim community, that we come together. So therefore the challenge I put to you, dear brother, and dear sister in Islam, what part do you have to play in this? For indeed, the situation is severe. But what, do we just crawl into our shells and give up and be ashamed to be Muslim? To the point that some of us advise our sisters and our wives and daughters to take off their hijab when they go out? This is what's befitting for us? This is what the Prophet would like to see from us? Or would he like to see from us that we crawl out of our shells and we go out there and we spread our message of good and of righteousness and constructiveness to the Scottish people and that we show them the beauty of our religion so that when tomorrow some crazy person does something crazy whether it be in this land or another land that the Scottish people be the first to say those Muslims, no, they don't do that that's not from their religion
innahu huwal ghafurur rahim Alhamdulillah ala ihsanih wa syukru laha ala tawfiqihi wa amtinanih wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina da'i la ridwanih Dear brother and dear sister in Islam, indeed it is a religion of action and it's a religion which considers the importance of the action of every single individual in it So therefore what am I going to do about this? And what are you going to do about this? Know that every single thing that you are upon their brother and their sister in Islam will have a ripple effect upon our religion. So whether it be you in your home, in your marriage, your patience there, and you doing your best to secure that it was successful, or whether it be you in your business, you making your best to provide jobs for your community, or you in your study, never give up. Strive and establish yourself as an imam in that, as a leader. So that you benefit yourself, you benefit your family, and you benefit your community. This is what our religion tells us. And to refuse to be put in a box, you cannot put us in a box. Because our religion is the religion of the heavens and the earth. What box are you going to put us in? You cannot say that we don't belong to this land. Because why this land is part of the heavens and the earth? Where else will we go? But we have to establish that for ourselves. I'm to show to change that narrative. And it starts with us and in this city. And it requires a change in the mindset in how we engage with the people. And for that reason, I'm very pleased that one of the initiatives that I'm happy to share is that the Edinburgh Festival is part of the festival in which the mosque participates in. In sharing this message of Islam to the people. Opening our doors. Because we have nothing to hide. Wallahi, what I say in this minbar, in this pulpit, is what I say in my office, one on one with my brothers and sisters in Islam. I do not have two faces, I ask Allah to give me that sincerity and that integrity. What I say to you and what I say to Muslims is what I will say to any non-Muslim. So for that reason we are calling members of the community to support such initiatives. Initiatives such as the, the Da'wah project that we have and that you will see displayed around the mosque. We ask you to support it. And that we ask you that together as a community, Let's put every single effort in making sure in refusing this narrative. The narrative of the people who don't want to see people living in peace and harmony. No, we refuse that. Indeed, know that Allah has commanded us to send salutations and praise upon His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَاللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ عَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَىٰ آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ كَمَا صَلَّيْتَ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ وَعَلَىٰ آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن الصحابة أجمعين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وأنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا وأراد الإسلام بسوء فأشغله بنفسه وارنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم ربنا آمنا في أوطاننا واصنح إمتنا وولاة أمورنا اللهم اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيموا الصلاة